quite an experience. I, <laughs> I went back and I, I said something to Melinda about it, and she said, no, they haven't got anybody. Matt and Alicia. Okay, it's it's they're Matt. Matt. <laughs> okay. Matt and Ashley, Matt and Alicia. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it's our tradition here at Appleton to present a Bible to on the first Sunday that a new baby comes, and it's my privilege to present Bible to uh, uh, to uh, Benjamin Scott Foker. So there you go. Y'all don't know the. I think probably everybody does the Fokers. Oh, we haven't done that. We got to hold him up. <laughs> hold him up. Let's go. I'll count to three. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> That's easy, isn't it? <laughs> now Matt is my wife's nephew and uh, for a, for those who don't know I don't think he'd mind me telling I think he he lived in rebellion for a few years but uh, there's been a lot of prayers going up from from the Folkers and the Kirby's and uh, he married a wonderful woman and now he's got two sons and he's a faithful Christian we're so proud of him so let's have a prayer on behalf of Benjamin Father in heaven, we give thanks for all the blessings you give us. We're thankful, Lord, today in particular for the, for the miracle of birth. We ask your blessings on this young man, Benjamin Scott. We pray that you bless him and be with him and be with Matt and Ashley as they strive to raise him in, in the Christian life. And help us, Lord, as a, as a church to, to be their support and their encouragement. Just please bless this family, Lord. Thank you so much for them and all they do here at Appleton. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's certainly my privilege to be able to introduce to you Brother Christian Rehbaum from Rajamundry, India. <clears throat> We've been, since we began here at Appleton, uh, helping to support that work there. And it's uh, one tremendous work. But LaFell and I met uh, Brother Rehoboam 37 years ago in Morgantown, Kentucky, when I was preaching there. And uh, that work was a small thing starting, but it has really grown and developed in, in a marvelous and, and wonderful way. And we have... Uh, been friends with uh, Brother Rehoboam and supporters of Brother Rehoboam for those 37 years. And the church here has uh, been, ever since we had our beginning here, a supporter of him. Uh, three of our elders, Dennis George, Ralph Brewer, and Gene Page, have actually been there and participated in that work and seen it. And then several others uh, that we, most of us know, uh, George uh, Peterson, uh, Bill Brummett, Philip Edens, Rick Schur, who's a member here, have all been there and have seen that work. So, and so we have verification of everything that we've heard about it, and we, we are thrilled always to know what's going on there and what he's doing. Brother Rehoboam has been one tremendous leader for those 37 years. You can't do a work like that by yourself. But here is a man who has good judgment in selecting people with the, the ability and qualifications they need to do a job, delegating the authority, and letting them do it. And with that, and under his leadership for all those years, uh, it's been one tremendous work, and I'm excited that uh, he's here to talk with us today about that great work. Brother Rebel. Thank you, Thank you. <coughs> Greetings to you from the Churches of Christ in India. 
It's always a joy for me to come to the United States. But when I come to the US, I never feel like going to a strange country. Reason for that, I have more brothers and sisters in Christ than any other place. It's always a joy for me uh, to come to this wonderful land created by God because we cannot find more beautiful land anywhere on this earth. Sometimes people in India ask me, Brother Rebaum, you have been to many countries. Where is the most beautiful country? Always I say, United States of America. Of course, Brother reminded about 9-11, but at the time I was in India, and watching news, was watching news about 9-11, but uh, I was thinking they were showing a Hollywood movie. But actually I was watching news, but still I was thinking I was not watching the news. I thought I was watching a part of advertisement of a Hollywood movie. But later, after five minutes, I realized it was really uh, going on. Then I started praying. Of course, I pray for the American brethren. So then I thought, the Satan can do damage only less. But Satan cannot destroy the godly people. Of course, in my personal life, Satan is trying to kill me right from my childhood. I never thought that I would live for 70 years. I am so grateful to God. God has given me longevity for only one reason, to preach the word of God. And when I come to the United States, I always feel like coming home. Because uh, when I see the brethren, I know hundreds and thousands of our brethren in the United States. I can see them and call them with their names. It was one time a preacher uh, took his car to the mechanic. Because the mechanics, because always they charge high in states or in India, anywhere. So a preacher thought uh, it would be good for him to tell him so that uh, mechanic would not charge him much. And the preacher said he took his car for mechanic to the mechanic and said. I'm a poor preacher, so that uh, would not charge him much. Then the mechanic said, well, I know that, because I heard you were preaching last Sunday. <laughs> so now I feel like I'm a poor preacher, because I'm very poor in English. Before I come to the U.S., because when I stay in India, all the time I preach in Telugu. I don't talk with people in English. I don't teach, preach in English. But the only time that I have to use my English when I come to the U.S. So when I fly, a little bit troubles me whether I can get the words or not. But I'm grateful to God. But once I start speaking, God really helps me 
are with the words. Because I have come from India, and I would like to say a few things about India. And the providence of God for me in my life to become a Church of Christ preacher. I grew up in Christian faith and my father, mother, very good Bible teachers. So from childhood, I read Bible and started preaching or teaching when I was five. But I never thought that I would become a preacher. But when I was young, the only one thing that I remember my father telling me, son, if you go to America, United States, Americans will do anything for you. So it's always made me to come to the United States. But after my father's death, because he was a businessman, after his death, my father's death, only ambition that I have, I wanted to come to the United States. All my ambition for my childhood, if somebody asked me, Rebbe, why did you have that kind of uh, thinking? I do not know really, but that's my ambition. All my ambition to convert India, at least 50% of the Indians must be converted. So the only way that I can do that by getting into politics. It is so easy for me to get into politics and become a national leader, a prime minister, president. Very easy for me. But always, I wanted to come to the United States first, then get acquainted with some politicians, go back to India, get into politics, and rule India, and try to convert as many people as possible. My goal, just convert least 50% of the population. The only reason for thinking that way, India was ruled by hundreds of Indian kings. They did not do any good to anybody, to the people. It was ruled by the other, other rulers. They did not do any good to anybody in India. They're the only kings. They did good to the Indians or the British kings. India was under the rule of British for 350 years. When first came to India to do business, there were 100 kingdoms in India. They were fighting each other. Then the British thought, oh, this is the right place for us to rule the country. So they controlled the entire India. The British is the one 
brought the unity among the Indians and made as a one country. They are the ones brought the education, schools, universities. They built the roads, bridges, dams, anicuts, industry, every kind of business. And I still remember when I was very young and my mother told me they never knew what a famine was. Only reason for that. When the British was ruling, before they get into the famine, the British rushed with the food grains. After India got its uh, independence and Indians started ruling India, but they did not do any good to anybody. Only they created problems and it's a completely cause corrupted country. So I thought it's a very good thing for me to get into power, to rule the people and try to show the light of Christ so that 50% of the population will be converted to Christianity. But what happened at the time I was only 19. I thought uh, 19 is very too young to go to the United States. Then I thought I must wait for one more year, get to the age of 20, then go to America. But what happened? So I did not like to waste my one year. Then I got uh, some kind of idea to use that one year just to make some money. I cannot start any business and get rid of it and come to America. It's not possible. So I wanted to wait until I come back from Yes, then start business or get into politics. But in that one year, I thought uh, making a movie is a very good business. I can make one movie and make a lot of money. So then I started going to movie studios just to learn how to produce to the two young men young men in the studios and of course I, I also had seen them the after two weeks they came to me and asked me I have no idea who they are are you interested in acting movies? No, I have no idea. I, I never acted. I do not know acting. But I told them, because just it's, it's only a joke. I told them, if I get a chance, I break the bones. It's only a joke. But they took it very serious. They took me to a different studio and uh, they asked me to say some of the dialogues, they asked me to act. Just of course I took it as a very sportive and I did my best. I was not there whether they select me or not, it doesn't matter, but they tested me for two hours. 10 to 12. But after testing, one man came and hugged me 
and said, you are my hero. And another man came, hugged me and said, you are my villain. So in one minute, I was selected to act in two movies. Oh, I was real excited. And I wanted to go home and tell to my mother first and get her blessings and come back and start acting in movies. Because you may think, uh, all of you may think that I don't look that good to be a hero or a villain. But I look different now. <laughs> the reason for that, I was, one time I was drugged by Satan. So everything has been changed. I lost my hair, my eyes has gone inside, my cheeks gone inside, my nose has gone up. <laughs> everything changed. But I'm happy, still I look good. <laughs> so what happened? I went home, because uh, George Dennis, was Brother Peterson, was Brother Brewer, Brother Page, they all came to India and stayed in my house. And uh, I'm so happy because they had seen the work personally in India. So what happened? Brethren, I'm a preacher in India. I preach continuously for three hours. So I forget time. So please uh, help me at what time I have to quit. How many minutes that I have? So what happened? When I went home, I told to my mother, we call Amma. Amma means mama. Amma, I was selected to act in two movies. So I came here to get your blessings. And my mother said, no, don't act in movies. When you were born, I had a dream. I want you to be a preacher. So just in one minute, I changed my mind. I started thinking what I was doing from childhood. I was teaching, preaching Bible, because always I stood first in the school, in the class, was the best student, and you name it. But what happened? When my mother told me that she wanted me to be a preacher, then I decided to be a preacher. Then I started preaching in India, entire India. But at the time, I did not know anything about Church of Christ, but it is very, very coincidence because I was thinking, when I started preaching, I was thinking I have to start a denomination. It's very, very coincidence, surprise to me. And I wanted to start a denomination with the same name, Church of Christ. But one day in Chennai, I was walking on the roadside and saw a small signboard, Church of Christ. So that is what I wanted to start. I did not know that there is already the Church of Christ. So when I went to that church one Wednesday, and after the service, our brother, he was in need of a translator because he saw me, he came to me and talked to me, and he came to know that I speak nine languages. And he simply asked me to spare three days to travel with him and help him in interpreting. So that's God's work. I was so happy to travel with him and interpret. So when we returned back to Chennai after three days traveling, he gave me six books and 120 Bible correspondence course lessons to translate. 
So that took me three months to translate those six books of church and 120 different Bible correspondence course lessons into Telugu language. Because Telugu is a state language. Because one king said, Telugu is the most beautiful language among all the languages in India. So all the time, of course, I preach and teach in Telugu language. And when I had seen the need of songbooks, we started printing the songbooks. And at the time, when I translated the six books and 120 uh, correspondence course lessons, I learned complete truth of the church, the teachings of the church. I can say I know more about the church teachings than any other in India. So then I decided, now I don't want to start any denomination. Just I'm a simply, I'm an evangelist, I'm a preacher. I'm not a, a denominational head. But many denominations requested me to be the head for their denomination. Just I refused. Just I wanted to be a simple preacher. But one of the great things that ever happened is coming to the United States. So one time, of course, I landed uh, in New York. When I landed in New York, already I came to the U.S., but uh, I know that I can fly to anywhere from New York to anywhere in the country for $99. But something happened at the time. But when I wanted to fly to Tucson, they wanted $499. I did not have that money. I have only $120. Then I went to the Greyhound. They said 299. I don't have that money. Then I asked them how much it costs to go to Bowling Green. They said $66. Oh, thank God. Because I wanted to see Brother David Dimachek. He is my sponsor. It's good for me to go to Bowling Green and I have a lot of confidence that I can borrow any amount of money from him. <laughs> so I'm not sure when I'm going to come to Bowling Green on Greyhound because I don't know the timings, so I did not like to call him and tell him. And also I'm not sure whether he was in town or not. So I came down to Bowling Green and called him from the Greyhound bus station. Of course, there was no bus station, only a stop. So I called Brother Dimachik and told him, this is uh, Brother Raybaum from India. I'm at the Greyhound bus station and I wanted to know whether he's in town or not. But Brother Dimachik, he's such a wonderful, godly Amazing man, because uh, when I think of any godly man, of course, to my knowledge, I have to think first of Brother David Dimachik is an example. And also he made me a better Christian, and I want to uh, follow, of course, his wonderful nature. So when I called him, uh, he came to the bus station and received me and uh, he took me to his house. Once I entered into his house, I had seen 20 preachers right in his house. Preachers meet was going on. So 
That's a wonderful uh, thing that happened. It happened as if that God made me. A God brought me to Bowling Green. So just one time I got acquainted with uh, 20 preachers and they all asked me, Raybon, don't go to Tucson, you stay here. So the Bowling Green has become a great sponsoring, supporting congregations for me and I'm so grateful uh, to all those that are involved in uh, supporting the Lord's work in India and with the help of the brethren. The first thing there is support to buy a Z jeep for me to travel to different places and about the printing press to print the literature and songbooks and of course we buy Bibles from the Bible Society and we print uh, tracts. It's amazing me the reason for that and uh, I never did ask the brethren money but they realized oh brother Rebaum needs a chief. Brother Rebaum needs a printing press to print all the literature. So everything before I asked them they are already just uh, provided me the funds to do the Lord's work. So I'm so grateful the way that God brought me to Bowling Green. Of course I went to the other states like Tennessee and uh, Texas, of course Arizona. But because I work with uh, Telugu language people and very recently and the state, Andhra state is divided into two states. But 13, 14, they were fighting half people for bifurcation, for division, a half people to live united. But finally, in 2015, the state is divided, and everywhere, of course, we are facing every kind of problem after division and people started taking advantage and producing the false documents and selling the property that they don't belong to them. So we are having a hard time to find our places to purchase and build the uh, church buildings. But in nutshell, um, I say that we train close to 200 preachers and started 400, 4,000 congregations in India. We train every year 20 preachers and uh, every year we try to establish 20 new congregations and every week we held gospel meeting and every month we held the preachers lectureship. I'm glad Brother Brewer, when he was in India, and he opened the Middletown Church of Christ Hall. And at the time, of course, uh, uh, they were in India. And I'm glad uh, Brother George Peterson for taking care of the finances. And, uh, and I'm grateful to Brother David DeMagic and for everything. Uh, it's only my fault, not asking him my fault. If I ask, he will do anything. So I'm so grateful that we are wonderful brethren that I got acquainted in the church. So I don't think of any other things. I don't even ask them. But they send money to do the Lord's work. So one time we had a uh, preachers lectureship with 1700 preachers in entire India. They came to Rajamandri. But the church did not forget the benevolent work because according to the funds availability every month and we 
help the widows, 50 widows with rice and 50 lepers with rice and we are taking care of 100 destitute children. And at this time I have to thank Brother Sam Chaffin, of course, who passed away. Brother Sam Chaffin, he passed away, but he left all his estate for the Lord's work in India. So when I received that money, and until now, we did not spend a single dollar from that money, but we spend from the interest that we get from the bank every month. So we are so grateful to God for such a wonderful brethren that we have uh, in the church and also because uh, uh, our brethren built uh, 14 church buildings because now the 15 church building is under construction. It will be completed by the end of uh, November when I go back to India by the end of October, but when I go back to India, the last week of uh, October, uh, it will be inaugurated. Because according to my plans, I shall be in uh, Kentucky for a month this September, and October, I shall be in Tennessee, and leaving back to India on October 27th. But once again, brethren, I express my joy and gratitude from the bottom of my heart for your love and prayers and continued uh, support. Of course, uh, I live in India and uh, I built a special house just for the American brethren with the help of the Demachics. But I can't see anyone coming to India. But I had seen only Brother Brewer and Brother Pace was Brother George Peterson, Brother Penish George, George, George Zenis, I can't use some, sometimes the names, but George Dennis, and uh, I welcome personally any of you can come to India, nothing to be worried for your stay or your food or anything. But when I come to the ES, our brethren take very good care of me. And I think in this week, our brother Melvin Kirkham is one of the elders from New Hope Road, which is my overseeing congregation. And in this Last five days, I was in their home. Now I'm looking better. So what if I live for two months? So before I leave, I think I, I look better. So because the brethren take very good care of me, I express my thanks to Brother Melvin. He's the one taking care of me. and took me to many places all these uh, four days. And when I stay in India, I don't talk with anybody. Only time that I talk, I preach, teach. That's all. I don't want to talk with anybody about anything. But here when I come to the ES, here is the one. I got to talk to the brethren. How to visit homes and talk to the brethren. They ask me questions. I answer them. So always, of course, I have to talk in United States uh, with the American uh, families. But well, I think one time I told you, I lost my voice completely. So when I was drugged, I was dumb for two weeks. I was treated, but at least I got some sore throat, but I'm happy that I'm uh, able to speak. So I'm so happy because though I face some problems, God always 
gives me some kind of uh, uh, comfort. I never prayed to God for longevity. But God has given me 70 years uh, age. So as long as I live, because thousands of preachers and uh, thousands of church brethren, they always uh, pray for me. And I'm so happy this time to come back to Alberton to express my gratitude for your continued uh, support for me. And you're always welcome to come to Rajamandri. And happy news is the Walmart started their shop, their business in Rajamandri. So if you want to buy anything Walmart, you don't have to go to Bowling Green. You can come to Rajamandri. <laughs> so we are always a uh, joy uh, to even to think of you. And as I told you, if you leave me, I keep on speaking. So I want to close my talk at this worship place uh, telling you a small illustration. One time, a father has twin sons and they grew up and he wanted to give his power of attorney to one of his sons. But he wanted to select to whom I must give all this responsibility, get this property, so that they don't waste the property. So he gave one son $100, another son $100, and asked them, you fill your room, you buy something with $100 and fill your room. And I come and see your rooms in the evening. <coughs> so when the father went to see their rooms and one son, he bought hay, hay with $100 and filled his room. And he was not able to fill that room entirely. Of course, still there was some space was left. Another son, he bought candles with hundred dollars. When he went, when father went and saw his room, the entire room with full of light, no darkness. One sun filled with hay and everything was dark. And here is another sun filled his room with candles, full of light. So the father gave all his property to this son so that he can spend his money wisely. So when we think of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Redeemer, he said, let your light shine before the men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Brethren, can you believe when you travel in India and you find Alberton Church of Christ, two buildings, because you have one, Alberton Church of Christ here, but in India, two buildings. I'm grateful. And there is another, Canon Line Church of Christ. So I'm so grateful to all the brethren to, for their kind contributions. But it's my intention. And I'm grateful to God for giving me energy to travel and preaching. And also, every month, we help 500 people with medicine. It's a free medicine. It costs me only one dollar to help one man. We go to the villages, very remote places, forest areas, 
where they have no access to get medicine. But we take the medicine because this is our monsoon season. Very poor people. They all get sick. There's no way for them to get medicine. They can't move. The entire family sick. But we are the one try to help these poor people. But I'm so happy. God has given me wonderful opportunity. But now the anti-conversion law is already in action. So people have no right to convert people. But in my case, I am so happy to say God has given me such a wonderful opportunity. Wherever I go, I don't find any kind of opposition. People invite me, whether Hindus, any religion, no objections from anybody. They help me to hold the gospel meetings, to have these medical camps, and do any kind of things. I don't find any objection either from the politicians or from the public, or from the officials. But I'm so happy God has given me a wonderful opportunity. So as long as I live, I want to be a preacher. And as I told you, I feel like I'm born to preach, and I want to live only for <coughs> preaching. And I'm so happy to come to Alberton to express my joy and uh, in future so we want to spread the Lord's kingdom despite of any kind of opposition either from the government or from the people we are not worried we are for Christ we are for God and we want to let the light shine in India with the gospel and I invite all the brethren just to come to Rajamandri at least for two weeks and stay there and enjoy uh, your days. And if you got, want more information, of course, you may get uh, from Brother Brewer or Brother Dennis George or Brother George or Peterson or others that uh, uh, visited uh, India. Once again, brethren, I express my gratitude to you. Please continue uh, to remember me in your prayers. I think your prayers are keeping me to do more work for the Lord and getting more energy. And despite my throat problem, or despite the doctors advise me not to preach, not to teach Bible, but I'm grateful to God. God has given me enough energy in my throat to preach hours and hours in India with the help of the microphones. Then we started giving the megaphones to the preachers. And we have distributed 14 megaphones to 14 our congregations. So once again, brethren, it's a great joy for me to come to Alberton and to visit all of you. I'm grateful for this great uh, opportunity to say a few things about the Lord's work. And I hope uh, the rest of the things that I wanted to say, I tell to the uh, adult class. Thank you. Anyone like